play. What's going on, everybody? How are you guys doing? I am sorry I'm tardy. But I got some people's ears. It's not it's not none of their fault. The they it's mighty wide of them to be on time. It's mighty wrong of me to be <laughs> to be tardy here. Um but let's get into the introductions here. Um you guys do know that today I did say that we were going to be bringing on someone that has a very controversial he's been very controversial lately overall um pissing off people like mike winger <laughs> um let me introduce you rob kowalski he is a christian uh polygynist um would you say uh activist yeah evangelist, polyg evangelist. polygyny evangelist now many of you who know or who've been following me for over five months probably have noticed uh there is actually a conversation that myself and rob had we had do we had two it was me and you and then me you and the iron disciples right oh was i in that one with you i definitely did the iron disciples that like you introduced me to them i'm trying to think if we were there together but you definitely came on my podcast. yeah it came on yours yeah and then i swear i thought me and you and maybe we were on there together actually i gotta hit up mike you'll probably know but this topic has been a topic that has been discussed before and has seemed to be brought in back up because well rob did some uh did a video that seemed to get go viral i mean it it's only at like not even nine thousand views to be honest but it it got mike's attention for whatever reason yeah and um michelle Everybody knows Michelle uh, around here. Um, Michelle also is a Christian or comes from a Christian background. Sorry, Christian background, but is also in um, very similar lifestyle. And um, I reached out to Andrew and I have tried to, um, I think there's, I'm not sure if there's still talk going on, um, but I think it's supposed to be on the crucible if there is one. But Andrew and Rob, potentially have a debate on the crucible coming up um still waiting to get confirmation on that but before that we might as well have wanted rob to come on and have the conversation with michelle about christian polygyny what is it how is it like what is it why do you believe what it is and why do so many people confused about it mm -hmm. like yeah. What, what is the taboo here? What what is there or is 90% of the church is wrong or is Rob, you know, wrong? Like what which one is it? Like it's kind of uh, kind of odd, right? Um so Michelle, introduce yourself. Uh my name is Michelle. Uh I now uh mod and produce for Glenn. Uh I'm really happy to be here and um I have questions. So I did catch Rob's uh, previous stream uh, earlier today. Uh, it did answer some of my questions. So he like cut my list in half and I appreciate that. <laughs> so um, like, I'm happy just to jump into it. Like, I, yes, I do have a, uh, a particular lifestyle. I'm in an open marriage. I have a husband and a boyfriend. I understand a lot of people don't agree with that. I am not at all prescriptive of my lifestyle. And I certainly would not go around trying to uh, justify it through a Christian lens. So uh, I have thoughts and opinions, and I'm, I want to get into it. Sure. Thanks. That that conversation earlier was all over the place. I was like, because he's an atheist, it's better if I talk to believers. It's hard to even have the conversation when they don't recognize the fact that God exists and the Bible is, you know, inspired by Him. So it's kind of hard to have the conversation. But um, I mean, from yeah. the secular view, I would grant you quite a bit that you talked about about uh, some of the advantage as far as mm -hmm. economics and stability and stuff like yeah. that, just in my own experience. So I don't yeah. take much issue, you know, with you there, uh, yeah. just to make that clear. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. I don't mind if people disagree. I understand why they would. I'd say even to Glenn, I'd say it's much higher than 90 percent of the church that believes in monogamy only. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they've been misled. And like I was, I was a monogamy only christian for 23 years and then i actually researched it and i realized why 
you know, the, all the holes. There's so many holes in the monogamy only argument mm. that they try to tell you, oh, it was a sin and God just, you know, winked at it or whatever that verse is. And he never said anything because, of, you know, they wanted to, whatever the reasons that they give populate the earth or because of wars and they needed more husbands. They, I've, I've been told a lot of different things. I didn't ask. I'm, unfortunately, I didn't ask the question often enough. Um, well, let me. How about I just start off by um, throwing you a question? Sure. Here, and it kind of see maybe if you could. Yes. Yeah. This will kind of kickstart. You know, you going into your um, ex explanation here. So, how do you interpret biblical passages that discuss polygyny? Like stories like Abraham, Jacob, David, and Solomon, for example. How, how do you interpret those? So, I mean, people would say you can't take what's uh, descriptive and make it prescriptive. That's the, the, the line that they give you because you do see polygyny all over the Old Testament. Many of the men who wrote the Bible, almost all of them actually were polygynous. The men that God chose to lead the country. Okay, Moses, Abraham, you know, the whole nation of Israel came from Abraham, David, Solomon, Guys that had multiple wives. Never once did God call them out, and God called out plenty of sin. He punished people for sin all the time. Never did he punish them for that. Um, so people say, well, that was descriptive. It wasn't prescriptive. And they say, well, look, there was problems in their life, so obviously polygyny is bad because they had problems. I'm like, well, that's like saying, well, Adam and Eve, Eve destroyed the world under monogamy, so monogamy is bad. Monogamy is sin. I mean, it's a foolish argument. It's a child's argument, actually. But then when you go into like, the law of Moses, Exodus 21, 10, it says, if a man takes an additional wife, he must not deny the first food, clothing, and conjugal rights, sex. Yeah. That, pretty much, that sounds like prescription to me. It also says Exodus 22, 16, if a man seduces a virgin, he must marry her. Mm -hmm. Right. That sounds like prescription. It doesn't say if he's not married. No, you sleep with a virgin who's not betrothed. You marry her. Now, listen, that keep in mind that rule was to protect women because mm -hmm. do you think, because they would be valued, right? Right. Well, would, would it happen more or less if you knew you had to take her home and take care of her? Well, less, of course, because, I mean, I, I've slept with plenty of girls that I had no desire to ever see again. I just wanted to have sex in the moment. They they might have even been a three, and, but I just wanted to, to have sex, right? And we've all been there. We've all had sex with people that we would never tell anybody. Nothing I know less than a five. Okay, okay maybe. Less than well, a five. Well, <laughs> Hey, well, that people have different ways they go. I guess. <laughs> I'm just uh, you just you get my point. My point is, yeah. is like if you knew you had to take care of her after, would you do it less or more? You do it less, and that's what God knows that. So that's why the laws existed. But it, uh, my point is, it was commanded. Polygyny was commanded in certain circumstances. Uh, certain circumstances. Also, levirate marriage. If you know, if your brother's white, your brother yeah. dies, and she doesn't have a kid. You got to marry her and give her a baby. It doesn't say if you're not married. So this or course, she could do what. I don't know what the other alternative she was. She takes you in front of the elders, you okay, lay down, right. and she steps on your. Right, you're basically a disgrace. You. Yeah. So this, it, the idea that polygyny was a sin is horseshit. It's it's the biggest pile of horseshit in all of Christianity. It's it's the biggest deception, I believe, and it's probably the most de devastating deception besides the original lie in the Garden of Eden, as far as what it's done to humanity, because. You got millions of women that can't find husbands, you know, two to one women in the church right now. And half of the women were basically telling them you got to stay single and childless or you have to fornicate or you have to marry an unbeliever because of can some tradition. You, can I back you up just a little bit? How did you sure. come to the conclusion that this was a deception? Well, I mean, so for me, I did, I never researched it. Right. So um, I believed it for 23 years. I lived my life according, according to it. I was abstinent and single for about 19 years or 18 years, I think it was, if you add it all up. So first six years of my Christianity and then 12 years when I rededicated my life. Now, I did make two isolated mistakes in those 12 years, but still a long time. I mean, do the math, right? This is like every day, you know, every those weekend. Two, are those two isolated mistakes? You were, you went monogamous? <laughs> I No, they weren't like dating. I just, one, one night I was drinking and I just slept with a girl. Another time it was just boundary issue. But, you know, basically it was a lot of loneliness and single and, and had to keep real strong boundaries because I slept with hundreds of girls when I was, you know, before I was a Christian and then when I was backslidden. And so I when you were a male stripper. Easy. Yeah, I was a male stripper. So it was very okay. easy for me to go from like if I kissed a girl, we were going to have sex pretty much. Right. So I had to keep real strong boundaries those, you know, six years and those 12 years, which meant 
I couldn't do a lot of things. I didn't have freedom in how I lived my life. I would never go away for a weekend with a girl or even have a girl over my house on a Friday night to watch a movie with. So I, you know, it was a lot of being by myself and it sucked, but you know, how did I come to find out it was deception? I researched, I just looked it up and, and this is what I hope to do with this message is just make enough noise that the 27 year old me that out there actually picks up the Bible and checks for themselves. Because once you, once you look, you realize how ridiculous it is to think that Jesus would have changed the marriage laws. Think about all the women in Israel that would have been thrown into prostitution had he done that. He would have caused so much chaos if he came along and said, God changed his laws on marriage. Now it's monogamy, guys. Like, this is a Greco-Roman idea. It's a, It came from pagans. One man, one woman. That's where the word romantic comes from. Came from the mm-hmm. Romans, even though they all had prostitutes and mistresses on the side. It wasn't about morality. This was all about, like, property and stuff. So, now, the question ahead. is, do you see poly- poly- polygamy or polygyny Polygyny. As a divine directive, or as a cultural, um, uh, as a cultural like accommodation in biblical times, was it a, a, a cultural accommodation, or is it more like a divine divine directive? I think it's. I don't. Well, so first off, in the Bible, they never use monogamy or polygyny. Those words aren't used. It's just marriage. So mm-hmm. you, one marriage is between one man and one woman. What the Bible never says is how many one. Uh, one man and one woman, you know, one flesh unions a man can have. I can have multiple one flesh unions. So if, but at the end of the day, it turns out, you know, to be a lot more responsibility for a man because you're taking care, covering, protecting, providing for more than one woman. If it was just about sex and there'd be no need to commit to them, just go out and have sex. It's easier to have sex with a lot of women than it is to marry a few of them. So not um, for some guys, they'll say well, that's something else. They um, think it's what? Jess White, five Australian dollars. AWNM beer fund. Beer for your recovery after the last 24 hours. <laughs> That's for Are We Not Men. Are We Not Men, we got a $5 beer fund from Jess White. She said uh, you need recovery for the last 24 hours. Uh, Michelle, you were about to say something? Uh, yeah, I was curious. You had stated that um, you came to this conclusion uh, via research. Was this uh, strictly the Bible? Like, uh, what sort of references did you reach into? What resources yeah. did you use to uh, to reach this? Yeah, so the first article I came across was uh, a guy named Berean Patriot. So he's got a blog up. You can just Google Berean Patriot or go to BereanPatriot.com and search, uh, look for his polygamy article. And um, that was the first one. And it, it's very detailed. It goes back to the original words. And there were certain verses. Uh, I always knew that I would, I would watch, right? which you know, which went up before I was a Christian, why I'd never really get married because I wanted to have freedom. I didn't want to commit to one woman. So I did have girlfriends, but I would even cheat on them. Um, so, you know, but I, there were verses in the New Testament that I thought were pretty clear. One was First Timothy three two. The deacons must be. The I was going to bring that up. I just brought that. That was going to be my next question um, yeah. to you, Rob. Um, so the question was: So in New, the New Testament teachings, how do you reconcile polygyny with New Testament t- passages um, that emphasize monogamy, such as First Timothy three two, yeah. where and I'll read the scripture. It says, therefore. An overseer or a deacon, right, must be above reproach. The husband of one wife, sober mind, self controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. So, if you look at the original Greek word that Paul used, he used a word called mias, M I A S. It also means, it means one, it means a, and it means first. Okay, so now read it with that in mind. The deacon must be the husband of a wife, or or he must be the husband of first wife, meaning he's not divorced. So he's either got to be married or he can't be divorced. That This is all, anybody can look this up. Go to Strong's Concordance right now if you want to. Look up the original word for Timothy. It's meus. It means A, one in a set, or first. Okay, so like, the, the I think it was like the believer's, uh, the the women uh, found Jesus' body on the Mias day of the week, the first day of the week. Okay, so the, even the, the thought that Paul, who was a Torah keeper, by the, I mean he he was raised as a Pharisee, he kept the law, so did Jesus, right? He he, to think that he would come out and and override the law of Moses, that he even had the authority to do that, he didn't. He didn't have the authority to override the law of Moses and get rid of 
uh, the regulations around polygyny, nor would he have. So he was just saying, now some people argue that no, he, this letter was written to the church in Greece and Greece was a monogamous culture and they wanted the church to grow. So they knew that the deacons, the leaders had to be, uh, you know, or when it should be husbands uh, monogamous mar in monogamous marriages so that it would appeal to the Greeks. That's a possibility. But even if I'll go, even if I was to um, give you that it meant monogamy, which I do not believe it does because it doesn't fit with the rest of scripture. And it's only so for, actually, deacons. It's only for deacons though, Glenn. You're, are you a deacon? Are you a deacon? I'm not a yeah. deacon. No. Okay. The majority of men aren't deacons, but then what we try, what, what, what pastors and churches tell you is that it's for all men. Well, it doesn't say that. What is the value of being a deacon? What was like the limitation? I don't know that there was much value. It was kind of like an errand boy is from what I'm told. So I have strong concordance pulled up here. Yeah. I was says, actually curious about your church authority views. Um, what, what specifically? Like what denomination you are, uh, if there is a, a mm. hierarchy of um, uh, church authority and um, like Man, where you stand on all that, like what denomination you are. I just believe in Jesus. I don't claim any denomination. I do consider myself a Christian. Um, I've been kind of What does like, that mean? Uh, I mean, I have a, I, you know, I guess it's just a lack of a better term. I'm a follower, Jesus follower. That would probably be more descriptive. I, I, I you know, I, I spend time with him every day. I pray. I, I let him make the decisions. I, mm -hmm. I attempt to apply the Bible to my life as, as much as I can. You know, like I try to live according to it. I mean, I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I prophesied when I, when I got saved. Uh, so I, I know that he is who he says he is. So He's you believe coming... that Jesus Christ is fully God, fully oh, yeah. man, died for our sins, rose yes. again in three days, uh, back. took all of it. All of it. I do. Was I think born I... of a virgin. I do believe that. I believe that we're going to. Lived a sinless gonna... life. What's Holy that? Trinity, all that. Yep. Holy Trinity, believe... all that. See, now there, there's some things where I wonder if I was misled that I haven't researched enough because once you, once I saw this lie, I mean, I'm like, Whoa, the church, I can't believe how far off they are. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, if you look at throughout history, the people that were persecuted were always per persecuted by the mainstream religious establishment, right? Jesus was killed by the Pharisees. The disciples were all killed by religious people, basically. Um, so like you have to start questioning like i'm being persecuted now for talking about this i know it's the truth i have great discernment god's already how given do you me know that because i have great discernment oh real quick i want to point out and just i see it. people that are listening um that were worried about the word mias so i have it here in the strong's uh um uh strong concordance um and according to the uh nasb translation um there's a lot of words for this, like agreement, alike, alone. It's a lot of it's singular, right? There's first, individual, man, singular, one, 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 man, one thing, one person, singular, smallest, someone. It's like it's all individual or first. So can I can first, I read first is in there as 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 a can I read first Timothy three with first in there? And I want you to tell me what fits better. Let me pull up NASB 1995. That's the translation I use. Here's a trustworthy saying. Whoever spies, aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Now, the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate self. This Okay, so this is different. Faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money, must manage his own family. Well, anyway, if you read through this, it sounds to me much more like just a man that's married that knows how to take care of a family, which makes sense. If he's going to be, if he's going to oversee the family of God, he's got to be married and, and know how to manage a family. Now, now here's what is really wild. When you think about it in today's church, if a man has been divorced three times, as long as he's only married to one woman, he's qualified to be a leader in church. Now, who's a better manager, a man who's got three failed marriages or a man that's got three wives. I'd say the man with three wives, cause you better know how to manage that household with all those different female personalities in there. Or he's crazy. We say, right? we say the man is, he could, he could have wrecked three marriages. And as long as he's only got one at that time, he's good. That's the most ridiculous crap I've ever heard. Um, now, look, even in the, even in, if you want to talk about new Testament, Jesus likens the second coming to a polygynous marriage. He's the groom. He's coming back for 10 virgins, 
Five of them are wise. Five of them are foolish. He takes the five wise virgins into the marriage chamber where they get it on. And you're going to tell me that polygyny is a sin? What? He compares himself to a polygynous groom and polygyny is a sin? Are you, this is the kind of stuff that I just never even thought of before because nobody talked about it. If polygyny was a sin, he would have never he would have never used that analogy. Okay, um, so then you believe that Jesus? Um, so do you believe that Jesus is teaching support or challenges this practices? I think it supports it. I think it's clear in the in the parable of the ten virgins. Even God in the Old Testament says he has two wives, Israel and Judah, two sisters he married. Do you think God's going to compare himself to a polygynous? And now a that's and you're talking about in um, Isaiah. I think so. It's Isaiah, yeah. Isaiah 3. Um, or when he hands uh, is, uh, Jerusalem the letter of divorce. Yes. Yeah, okay. Just want to make sure I was tracking with you there. Yes, you're, yeah, yep. Um, so when it comes to spiritual leadership, how do you view the role of a husband in a polygynous relationship compared to a monogamous one? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't think you need to be exclusive in order to be able to protect and provide a woman mathematically we don't even have enough christian men to marry all the women that want to be married there are two women for every one man in the united states in the church right now you tell a christian that and they go well we just need to get more christian men we just need to evangelize i'm like what have you been doing have you been doing it so god knew that there was always going to be a shortage there's always going to be some men that are selfish they get incarcerated they become drug addicts they get they die earlier you remember when Paul said in the New Testament, he said, older widows, get remarried. Remember he said that? So the church, if they're under 60, get remarried. He didn't say, try to find a husband because he acted like it was no big deal. Just get married. Okay, where now my question to you is, where are all these 50-year-old single Christian men in the first century church? Give me a break. There were no single Christian men in the first century church. They were all married. And he says, get married. He's saying, join one of those families so that these women need a family. Women now need a family to belong to. Women aren't good in general. They, they kind of spiral out. You know, they need a man to like calm them, protect them. Not to say that they don't contribute to that. Well, then how do you, how would you ensure fairness and equality amongst the wives in a way that aligns with Christian values? I'd go back to Exodus 21 10. It says if you, a man takes an additional wife, he must not. Deny the first food, clothing, and conjugal life. You have to treat her exactly the same as you treated her before. Mm. Yeah, because what'll what'll happen, and God knew, is you marry a girl, a woman young. Let's say you marry, you know, you're 20 years old, you marry your high school sweetheart, she has three kids for you. Now you she, you know, she's 45, 50 years old, you get a midlife crisis, you decide you're gonna want to marry trade her in for a new model, which happens all the time under monogamy, by the way. God um, says you God, God, who God says, in? Oh, yeah, it Classic. happens all the time. Who trades in a classic car? <laughs> but God says, look, you can you can marry the 25-year-old, but you still have to take care of that first one. That's how monogamy screws women. Because now that 45-year-old with three kids gets left out. She's out trying to figure find a husband, a godly husband, when she's got she's 45 years old and she's got three kids. And now th this asshole go, runs off with somebody else because of this false doctrine. And she's left out in the cold. Good luck. Good luck to her. There was a guy, let me tell you this quick story. There was, I went to the biblical families. It's an organization, a bunch of Christians that know this is the truth. Not a cult, not Mormons. There's just a is that the group out of um, Vegas or? I don't know if they were out of, I think the, 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 the executive director's in Florida. Okay. But anyway, um, there was a guy there and he had been married for 31 years. Him and his wife got up to speak. And he was talking about her, her, her friend, the husband died and she had eight kids. Six of them were still in the house, six smaller kids. Now wow. the guy had fallen in love with her friend also, and, but he was still very much in love with his first wife. And they were just talking about how he was considering marrying her. And, and I thought to myself, how can that not be God? Who in the hell, what, what, what are the chances that this woman, this widower with eight kids is going to find a man to marry her under monogamy, probably close to zero. I ain't marrying no woman, ain't no kids. Yeah, but but but, but, this is what, but but if it was polygyny was allowed, if if maybe she was number five for you, Glenn, or number four, might you marry her? Maybe. Mm. You might because of the kids, right? 
It would, and you wouldn't be doing it for the sex. Shocker. With, You'd be doing it because it's the right thing to do as a Christian man. But so monogamy that prevents that. Like, are you, monogamy that you, prevents that. Are you using the passage where it says, you know, um, to take care of the widows and the orphans? Well, yeah, I mean, that, that is the heart of God, right? To care for I, thought that, I thought he was talking about the church. I didn't think he mean me, me individually. <laughs> <laughs> well, who is the church? Aren't you the church? I'm the church. We are the church. Um, interesting. So from a cultural um, and ethical and practice, right? And from this standard, um, how do you respond to society's views often stigmatizing polygyny, even within Christian communities? I mean, I, I don't care. You know, like I've, I've already, I know what I signed up for when I started talking about it. I was ex basically asked not to come back to my church, kicked out of my small group. Now, um, recently, now there's a guy from Fuller recently. Um, Steve Lawson? He just didn't he just lose his job? He yep. got stuck down. And he was there for I want to say quite some time now, right? Right? He's been there for a good minute. Yeah. As a no, he, yeah, he's he, yeah. I, I don't know how long he's been there, but I the story was pretty you know, publicized. Yeah, like something got leaked and in a small group, like a text message, right? And then they exposed him. Oh, are you talking about Vince Bantu, the younger guy, black guy? Yeah, yeah, younger black guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. That one too. Yep. He was he was that was very public. And I tried to get a hold of that guy. If you if you ever do reach him, I'd love to speak with him. Yeah, I was thinking about reaching out to Bad right? Because I, I know some people over at Fuller, but I'm pretty sure he wouldn't want to talk Think to about me. how many men in ministry get caught every year. There was something like 10 men just in Texas, just just 10 in Texas in ministry just last year get caught in having adultery or inappropriate relationships with women because we've set this impossible standard by prescribing lifelong monogamy to men when the Bible never does. It never prescribes lifelong monogamy. And then we wonder why men keep failing at it. Do you find it like as more of a secondary issue or um, a leading issue in the it sense that like, like, it's, 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 this is salvation at risk no here? no or is it more like, okay so you, but, you find it like a secondary issue but think about this think about how many men don't come to jesus because they know they can't be monogamous there are men that aren't mm -hmm. wired they are wired to cover more than one they're wired for variety they know it's an impossible standard and they feel like a scumbag like something's wrong with them justin waller talked about this he yeah said he felt like he was I broken think that might be i think that might be my greatest contention with you like I acknowledge that it is wrong and I take up my cross and I know that it's wrong and I don't try to sell it off like it's right or look for reasons for it to be right or say uh, the Bible was just written like for that particular time in that particular culture. And I don't feel like I would be the arbiter of uh, saying it was right. Like this is my father's religion and I would not have the audacity to disrespect it like that. But let me let me push back on that a little bit. I would agree that it is wrong for you, and the Bible is very clear. Oh, I know you would. Yeah. But the Bible's clear. It's not me. I just I just I just I know. Read. No, no. Can... The reason why is because you know a man still wrote it, and they only had their worldview and their language to work with, and well, we see, only and have that to have translate to off of. And well, the Bible is not. It is not self-explanatory. Uh, I'm very curious as to your theological uh, education on this. And, and like, just where you get the audacity. Like, well, I, I believe that the Bible is the inerrant word of God. I believe it was God breathed, inspired. I don't think it's it, it's inaccurate in any way, and it's very clear about a woman. Uh, you know, you, a woman should be married to one man for her whole life. It, you're, you know, according to the Bible, not that you believe it. You're an adulterer. That's what it says. I Correct. don't. I can yes, read. I take okay. up my cross but, and but, I'm a but, sinner. Yep. Thing. We don't see women uh, in the Bible having sex with multiple men and like especially being chosen as a leader for example like hannah or ruth or one of these people having sex with multiple men and god not saying anything about it we do see that or the other sex though we see men having multiple wives god never says a word not in all the whole bible never a word of a punishment no no condemnation nothing so you say well you know why do i say it's okay for one not the other i mean like i can read no, I know why it's not okay for one and not the other in the Bible. And I actually acknowledge that the Bible would punish and condemn women more than men. And that's because men wrote it. Okay.
You can believe that. I don't believe that that's why. I believe that even from a biological function, if you look at a man, how many babies can I make a year? Unlimited. How many babies can you make a year? One? Like I said, right? from a secular point, I have no contention with you. Well, I'm just saying biology leaves clues, right? I can make babies. I'm, you know, I'm older. I'm, I'm a woman can't make babies at From my a biological age. standpoint. I have no contention yeah. with you. So, 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 yeah. So God left clues about that. And, you know, I, I think men, you know, it's almost, to me, it's almost a sin not to cover uh, more than one woman because okay, so then, given the fact that there's one in three children being raised in fatherless homes, you got all these women that one husbands, you know, it's only like you should as a Christian man. It says if you you say to your brother, you know, be warm and well fed, but you don't do anything about their need, then you're in sin. So like that, but that's what we do as a church. We see all these women that are in you know, pay for when when men in church could step up and marry these women, but they won't because of this horseshit tradition. Let me ask you this. So um a very strong like it would be considered a strong argument for polygyny would be the story of Jacob right mm, heck yeah god orchestrated okay. that so jacob's marriage jacob had multiple wives um but his polygynous relationship you know were often marketed by conflict and strife like his wives would pimp him out look look i'll let yep. jacob sleep with you tonight give me some of those mandrakes you know and dude's got Correct. pimped out right um how do you interpret these challenges in the context of god's will for marriage well, so this is this goes back to the Adam and Eve thing, right? When people say, "Well, look, he had problems." So obviously, polygyny was bad. First off, the problems weren't about him being married to more than one woman. It's just normal life problems. Tell me what man's not going to be married, period, to one woman and not have problems? Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve destroyed the world under monogamy. Do we say that monogamy is bad? Like, no, we don't. So, it, where there's no like Adam destroyed the world because he listened to where there's. Boy. Yeah, Adam, it's Adam's fault. But the Bible says where there's no law, there's no transgression. There's no law against polygyny. Case closed. If I was to ask anybody watching this, okay, what sin is polygyny? People go, uh, they wouldn't even be able to answer because there is no answer. It's not a sin. There's no punishment. If I say, well, okay, well, what's the punishment? Uh, nobody's got an answer. There's no punishment. There's no sin. God never called it sin. We need to stop. You know? Okay. It, 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 it's destroy. It's actually very destructive because men just don't marry because we we see monogamy as this little cage and we're like, no, I'm not getting in that. I'm not. And so instead, but we still want to have sex, or we just wait for the one. Thirty years old. That's the average age men get married. We wait and we sow our oats, breaking hearts along the way, you know, making babies sometimes, single parent homes. Like th there would not be, you know, I would have got married probably at 18 years old had I known about polygyny. Why? Because I, I like the girl enough, you know, but I, I didn't want to sell too early. I didn't want to sell myself short. I knew my sexual marketplace value would rise over time. So instead I just had sex with her, stringed her along for a while. And then I did that to the next girl and then the next girl and then the next girl. Do you view that like Jacob's polygyny as a model to follow or as an example of God working through imperfect human choices? Uh, well, it says he he orchestrated it though, Glenn. Go read the chapter. He says he opened and closed wombs, so he orchestrated the circumstances for his people to come from a man with four wives. Consider that the most blessed family in the history of the world was a polygynous family. The twelve they were the twelve tribes of Judah came from. A hundred percent. You you if you say that they weren't legitimate wives, you're calling most of Israel bastards. And they wouldn't Would even you? be allowed in this. They wouldn't even be allowed in the sanctuary if they were bastards. By the way, according to Deuteronomy, one one of the verses it says a bastard can't be allowed in the sanctuary up to like the whatever generation. So, so it, you look at it as God's. That's was God's blessing. It was his. It was his hand in it for sure. The family grew into twelve tribes of Israel. Yeah, um, which were blessed by God. So, do you see that as an endorsement for polygyny, or is it a separate from? God's broader purpose. Like, well, okay, you know, God is, say, is, it, is, it, is it almost like, you know, in Romans it says God uses all things for the good for those according called to his will, right? So do you see this? Oh, God's just using this bad situation for good or that God, you know, in, created yeah. this. Like, this is, he endorsed this right here. And this is how the 12 tribes came from. Could right. he not have, could he not have create, uh, had one woman have 12 kids? I mean, there's that one 19, 19 and counting. <laughs> I mean, he could he could have had twelve kids come from one woman, couldn't he? 
I mean, why did he do it through through four is what I would ask. And then, uh, you know, I would I, I want to read to you Second uh, Samuel twelve. Okay. okay, this is when the prophet Nathan confronts uh, Nathan, and he said, uh, "Oh, he confronts David." Yeah, he confronts David. I mean, hold on. Yeah. Let, me go back. let me let me go back to the chapter so I can read the whole thing. This to is you. when he gets mad at him for adultery, and he's like, "God gave you all of yeah, Saul's the, life." Yeah. Nathan said to David, "You are the man." Thus says the Lord God of Israel: "It is I who anointed you king over Israel, and it is I who delivered you from the hand of Saul. I also gave you your master's house and your master's wives right. into your care, and I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have given you much many more things like these." Okay, mm -hmm. so God says, I gave you your 18 wives, David, and I would have given you more if you ask, why did you kill Uriah? Now, is, does God give us sin? No. Does God regulate sin? Does God say, when you steal, Glenn, make sure you steal like this? No, he doesn't regulate sin. Polygyny is not sin. This is a pagan idea, and it's bad for the world. And I would say to you, Michelle, like if you were with the right man, I don't, the girls I've dated, and I'm, I, I, I'm going to sound like a, a, a cocky prick for saying this, but the girls I dated, they didn't want any other men. They only wanted me. Okay. But men aren't like that. Men like variety. Would if you agree that you made life, up your own, your own denomination, basically, and no church agrees with you? I don't know if there's any churches that agree with me. There are. You Christians. haven't found a church that agrees with you. You basically just made up your own denomination and your own. I don't. I don't. I don't. Business. I don't gather together. But what does that? What does that have to do with the evidence you're being provided? Is there? A, no, no. It's fine. I understand everything you're saying about the Bible. Again, I'm not Christian. It doesn't mean much to me. Bible was written by a man to me. Either way, I just okay. understand what I've been taught, and I know that this is just like antithetical to actual Christianity. And I think that you and your imaginary friend decided that this is okay. Your horny imaginary friend, and it's based. And I like it. You know, go ahead and do you, and have all the sex. But you you're want. not. You're not I addressing any of the points I'm making. I don't I'm think you're I'm actually Christian. providing scripture. I'm providing scripture. You're, you're not, not even associated anything. with any church at all. And Christ, and the whole thing, the whole point. What does that marriage, have to do with anything? The covenant of marriage was the representation for Christ's love for the church, who He gave Himself up for. Marriage okay. is a sacrifice. So it's that not a sacrifice not to marry more than one woman? You to go have five wives because you're horny and you want to. It, it has nothing to do with horny. I wrote the book on abstinence. It's actually oh right God. here. It's called Why Waiting Works. I actually, oh, that yeah, whole... you did it for six years, and then you decided, you know what, this ain't for me. You have an addictive personality, and you like what makes you feel good, and this makes you feel good, and you think that you're right, and you are wrong. So just sit there and be wrong because you are. Now, let me ask you guys this. God's design for marriage. We see it in the beginning, right, in Genesis. God, you know, made Adam. Then he says, you know, um, let a man leave his father and mother and cling to his wife and let the two become one flesh. How can a man be one flesh with multiple people? Like, well, that's a great question because that, that does seem like it, it means monogamy, or at least that's what they tell us it means. First Corinthians 6, 16, Paul says, if a man sleeps with a prostitute, he becomes one flesh with her. How can it mean monogamy if that's the case? And well, because when did you say culturally, if he would supposed no, to marry her, it, it, one flesh is an idiom for sex. It's what happens during sex. You do become one flesh with that person, but the Bible never limits how many one flesh unions you can have. Or else, again, if um, I can sleep with multiple prostitutes, I can be married and sleep with a prostitute. If I become one flesh with them, how can that mean monogamy? You're saying that I can only become one with one, but that can't. The both verses can't coexist and be true. In addition to the fact that if one flesh means monogamy, how come the Jews didn't believe that? The Israelites, better yet. They didn't believe it for thousands of years. They wrote the freaking Bible, and they didn't believe it meant that. But here, this is what really blows my mind about Christians, is we believe that we understand what Scripture meant thousands of years after it was written better than the freaking people who wrote it. We do not understand better. They had direct access to God. The prophets came to them. They were polygynous. Very clear. All you got to do is read the Bible. Um. Okay. So now you said back in Corinthians, you said um, First Corinthians six sixteen. Yeah. Now, could that be figuratively when he says like he's they're correlating the fact that hey, if you sleep with this woman, that's like that's your wife, right? right? And and almost like if you sleep with a prostitute, you're one flesh. Like the the I like the concept of that is like oh crap, 
if you if you interact with her, you are one. God sees you as one with this woman. Mm-hmm. And it's almost kind of like, do you do you want to be married to a prostitute? Right. You know, it's kind of maybe that was written in a way to shame them. Like, hey, do you want to be seen as this? And nobody's like, oh no. Could that could that also be the interpretation? Uh, there? I, I don't. I mean, I I, I guess anything's possible. But again, I push back and say Moses wrote that Genesis. Right. He he wrote the one flesh verse. Now, mm-hmm. we, it's, it's very likely that Moses had two wives because it says he was married to the one woman, Jeth, Jethro's daughter, whatever her name was, Zipporah, I think it was. Zip, and then yeah. it says a few, of, like a few chapters later, that Miriam gave him shit for marrying an Ethiopian woman. Okay, it doesn't say that Zipporah died in those couple of years. You would think she did. Some would have mentioned it. He married an Ethiopian, and Miriam spoke against that. Now, do we really want to believe that Moses, the guy who wrote One Flesh, the guy who wrote the penalty for adultery, he didn't understand what it meant and went out and married two women and, and God didn't say anything. Like, it, it, again, you have to be really naive to believe this shit. Once you see the, the holes, it's like you'd have to really <laughs> just throw out all like logic to believe that God was somehow behind monogamy only. So then how would you interpret God's expectations for faithfulness? within a polygynous marriage that's and compare it to a compare it to a monogamous one well that's a great question if i i didn't make a vow to forsake all others with my wife i said if god wants me to cover more another woman um i will you know imagine if your wife said to you glenn you know i want you to marry the, the white widow across the street and you said well let me ask my wife i don't think god would be necessarily pleased with that because i think god communi- he's he's got a plan for you your wife is your helpmate and it, it, you know, as long as you're not breaking any vows, and this is where it gets sticky because a lot of people in America did not know this, so they made vows and ignorance to their wives to forsake all others. So you, you know, I don't want to speak into what you should do there, but I, I, I wouldn't be breaking any commitments with my wife if I, I won't lie to her. I tell her I'm never going to cheat on you. I'm never going to be lie and be deceitful to you and do something that disrespects you, and I'm never going to divorce you. But if God tells me to cover another woman, I will. That's not cheating. That's not being unfaithful. Like, well, how does that not like taint the marriage bed? Is the question. Like, when does it? Because you know, in um, in in I think it's in uh, Hebrews. No, it's in um. It says something along the lines: Do not adulterers, sexual imp- or people that are sexually impure, or, um. Those who taint the marriage bed, God will, you know, judge. How does it not taint the marriage bed if you are married, right? And mm-hmm. you're, how do you court someone while you're married or marry somebody while you're married? Well, is there any law against it? Because I'd say, yeah. There, huh? In America, you can't. Well, I mean, there's a law against the government, but does it, first off, does the government even really have any business deciding? Anything about marriage? I think marriage is God's institution. They, the government tells me two men can be married. I, well, really I, agree, necessarily... I, agree that, I agree that the government should be out of the business of marriage. Yeah. I don't you need know. them to validate my covenant before God. If I make a covenant with my wife before God, I'm married in his eyes. I don't need a government marriage license. The only way you're breaking a, the, the law is if you have two more than one government-issued marriage license, which I would never encourage anyone to do. But can you make a covenant before God and it be considered marriage in his eyes? I think so, yeah. Um, to to like as far as the marriage bed being defiled, I think if you're violating something in the word, if it goes against God's law, yeah, you know, it's really interesting, and this is probably will really make the Christians' heads explode. Is if you read Leviticus 18, the Bible never for girl on girl. Anytime homosexuality is mentioned, it's always male on male. It's it, it's completely silent on it. I'm not saying why that is. But I do think naturally a lot of girls like girls. I mean, you've probably seen plenty of that. But if they're not bisexual, I mean, a lot of times they're bi curious. And and when you read Leviticus 18, and it literally says, men don't have sex with men, men don't have sex with animals, women don't have sex with animals. It intentionally omits girl on girl. That makes me think, well, because of polygyny, right? Like God knew that a man, if he had three wives, he might want to take them to bed together at some time and that actually might be really good for the marriage talk to casey jones you know my podcast and he said threesomes are an absolute must because it it bonds everybody and it takes away any jealousy or sexual envy or whatever so 
you have to add all these things up and say, well, why would God be completely silent on it? And why do why do all most men actually find it hot? And most women kind of at least are curious about it. So if you add it all up, it, it kind of spells something. Now, does it go against mainstream Christianity? Yeah, it does. But I don't really worry too much about them because they killed the Messiah. You mean mainstream, mainstream no, it goes religion. against like all Christianity except for like Mormons. Michelle, what, um, too. what Michelle, about Mormons? Do you, do you do you do you do you like girls? Just out of curiosity, just it was just <laughs> I was just wondering because um so it's interesting. Um because okay. So I don't think the marriage bed would be defiled. I think you know what whether you took them to bed separately or even together, I think God's fine with it. I do. So, then, I so in Genesis 224, right? Marriage is described as a union, right? Where like again, man leaves father and mother, clings to his wife to become one flesh. How do you reconcile this the singular wife with the polygynous practice? Is it like just like a order a sequence? What do you mean about cling to is like in Genesis says the man leaves father and mother and cling to his wife. Now that's, that's right. written in singular, right. not wives. Right. Again, um, again, the Jews that the Israelites didn't believe that it meant one, right? Because we see polygyny practice over and over. But um, no, that was that was it. You're, they're talking about Mias in um, Mias uh, or Mias in, in 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 Corinthians. But this is in Genesis. So right. But I'm singular. saying the Jews didn't. The Jews had the scripture, and they didn't believe what you're saying. They didn't believe that it was singular, it's one wife. But I would also argue and just say, you know, Jesus said, "Love your neighbor, singular, as you love yourself." So does that mean we just have to love one, or is it a principle? So, but then also, like in Matthew nineteen, how do you guys? No, it's like that? grammar from ancient texts. Like you can't like make these arbitrary decisions on what the Bible says because you think that you've prophesied the word of God. Are you serious? What What are you talking about specifically, based off of what I just said, though? Uh, well, not, I'm, I'm, not off what I, I was speaking to your prior uh, stream, where you said that you had an experience of God. You prophesize, and that you are interpreting the word. I'm, of God. No, I'm presenting biblical evidence to you. Let's talk about the things that the verses, all the examples that we see in the Bible. Just talk about those. Forget. And I would just say they're written by sinful, shameful men who only had an idea of what God is because God is logos. God is theos. God is truth. And we only have a snippet of it. So no matter what we write down through the ages, it will never actually equal truth. You cannot just go by it. That is why you have a church authority that represents it. And you turn away. You just made up your own denomination of Christianity. You, I mean, good job have a club membership for all i care but like no it's not christianity that's just you your imaginary horny friend making Hold on, a church. You're, you're, you're talking in circles because you're saying the book is written by men it's all wrong but then you say something about christianity being right and you started which one no, is no, it? god is right god is okay. truth god is logos totally okay. separate i think god is real and i okay. think there's a lot of mythology about it and what i'm telling okay. you is that you're calling yourself a christian and it I, isn't correct. Yeah. yeah, you call, you call yourself Christian, right? A follower it's of Jesus. It's funny I'm being Christian. lectured by you. It's really funny. I'm sorry, what? Being it's funny to me that I'm being lectured by you. You're saying I'm this horny guy. I'm like, I was abstinent for like six years before I just got married a few months ago. Yeah, you're just trying to justify it because what I'm saying that that's the reason why. Not, I don't I'm care that even, you're horny. It's fine. Be horny. Like, I don't woman, care. You're an adulterer. But that does not mean. You're an adulterer. Okay. You're, you're having that's sex fine. with somebody besides your yes, husband and you're telling me not that a I'm, Christian. It's all good. Don't okay, care. There you go. Good. Congratulations. Okay. So right. book, again, I'm but telling wait, wait. you, you're like basically perverting my father's religion and I find it offensive. Okay. So when you guys talk, when you, when, um, but Rob, you can't address at, specifics though. Rob, when you, you look at like, specifics. like, uh, look at your dad, to be honest, your dad can't address anything that I'm saying. Sorry. When what? you look at Matthew 19, said, but you can't address specifics, nor could your dad, because I'm talking about specific cases, specific verses in the Bible, specific examples that we see. And you're just like, you're horny ad hominem attack. Like that's new. It, it doesn't change the fact of everything I just said. Because it's all written by man and all flawed. It might be God inspired, but it's. So then your like, your father, your father, your father studies, your father studies. A, a Who book are you to say what it means? Who are you? Right, exactly. Okay, that's fine. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. You can't say I'm perverting your father's Christianity and then say the whole thing is flawed anyway. Oh it's God. one or the it's other. Like, yeah, because I understand what Christianity how, how, is. You're just calling yourself one. How much does church authority and church 
history uh, historical what does monogamy have to do with faith in messiah my relationship with jesus explain because that i just said it to well, you well, because the covenant of marriage represented christ's love for the church who he how gave many people is jesus married for? to how many jesus people is jesus married to it doesn't matter he's like it's a perfect picture uh, of well, okay, okay i'm glad you brought that up go ahead go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. um I, marriage I is often it. used as a metaphor for christ's relationship with the church now, how does polygyny or polygyny reflect the singular devoted Christ for his bride, the church? Are you the are you the bride of Christ? I am part of the body, I'm part of the church. Well, the you church. know, well, hold on, but listen, he compares again the parable of the ten virgins, five wise, five foolish. Okay, who are the brides? The brides are the church members. Five half of them are foolish, they didn't have the relationship with the Holy Spirit, they get left behind. But five women go into the the marriage chamber with the groom that's all the people that are ready it's not it's not one it's five okay then how do you believe that managing multiple marriages like do you believe that managing multiple marriages might divert time and energy from serving god well you know i do think that that's a possibility yeah maybe that maybe that's why um if, if first timothy 3 2 really means one and not first then maybe it's just so you have more time to serve the church i don't know but the fact is, it doesn't jive with the rest of Scripture. You know, the best way, in my opinion, to interpret Scripture is with, with Scripture. And when you look at the whole so thing, the whole, of scriptura, 1 Timothy 3, 2, bang, he bangs a hard left. If you're saying that that means monogamy mm -hmm. for, for all church leaders, it's like, well, then why, why, didn't, why did the men that God chose to lead, the whole nation, much less a little church, why were they always in plural marriages? God didn't seem to care back then. Okay, so let me, let me present this to you. So let's say hypothetically god permitted polygyny for a specific time right and then that time has come and gone right and but although there's no scripture to say that it's blatantly a sin it's like you know we know it says homosexuality abomination it doesn't say right. that you know, um, multiple wives, abomination, but since it's not that blatant, right? But then in Romans, we see Paul says like, you know, obey the laws of the land. Well, if the laws of the land says that it's a, illegal, then therefore acting on it would make that a sin. Well, again, if you if you take more right? than one government issued marriage license, yeah, you you would, I guess, be sinning, which I would never tell anyone to do. Let me ask you this. If you were in Babylon when they told you to bow down to the golden idol, then when they made that a law, would you do it? I wouldn't. No, see, I have these bad knees from <laughs> bodybuilding. I can't kneel and bow down. It just doesn't work really well. For yeah. Me. I, um, I, think, I don't think legislation can override God's laws. You know, like I'm not, I'm not encouraging anybody to get married to the government to more than one woman. And, but, you know. Now, do you think that like, like polygyny can tend to be a, bad witness to believers or to new believers because in a world that's very sexually perverse be very promiscuous right um i think yeah i, I mean it, I, I, does it look yeah. like it could be leading it could just be con like almost allowing people to continue in their perversion of promiscuity how many how many people in the church do you know men or women single that are actually abstinent as I, I was in this world for 12 years, not many, the majority of them are actually just, they're out getting it in too, because it's really hard to be absent for a, an extended period of time. Marriage rates are the lowest they've ever been in history right now. Mm -hmm. So no, you, yeah. put, you put people in a possible situation. They're, they're horny. They, they still want to have sex, but nobody's getting married anymore because men aren't stepping up to do it. They don't see the value. So women are, are having to either stay single and, and and alone or you know if they want some company or to maybe have kids it's almost like you're kind of almost forced into fornication even even the believers so like i would say look if you had guys like you know justin waller if he came to christ would he would he maybe more be more likely to come to christ if he knew that polygyny was part of it because it does return some level of masculinity back to it i believe monogamy only kind of emasculates it cuts the balls off of christianity which is why you got a lot of guys like Andrew Tate going to Islam because 
They I heard he's coming. I heard he just renounced. I think he's coming back to Christianity. Dude, I would love that. I've been praying for his salvation. Um, okay, a couple more questions because I know we, we said an hour and I didn't want to keep you too much longer since we started late. Um, what about the negative outcomes, right? Uh, many Old Testament examples of polygyny, okay, like I'm going to say like Abraham, Jacob, David, and Solomon resulted in family conflict or a spiritual downfall. Do you see this as a warning signs against the practice? Which ones? Hold on. Which which examples did it give? Or did Abraham, it give? Jacob, David, and Solomon. Jay, okay, so let me think about that for a second because Abraham, right? He had Ishmael. Okay, Hagar. Right? Then, yeah, he, then, he had some problems with Hagar. Okay. Yep. And then we'll look at all the problems, right? The 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 theory or the belief is that it, uh, um, Islam came from. Yeah. Your sons will always be at war. <laughs> Right. So there's the conflict there, right? And then um, you have uh, Jacob. What was the know? issues there? What? What was the issues with Jacob? They sold his son. <laughs> sold his son? Remember? The, the, the youngest son? one that went, got sold. The, 12 no. bro the brothers got mad. Oh, at him Joseph. Joseph. Oh, was that? Was that? Yeah. Was it? Oh, yeah. The 12 tribes. Yeah. Yeah. But right. Listen, listen, Adam and Eve, one son killed the other. Do we blame monogamy? Like seriously, this it's like childlike reasoning to do that. Well, I'm just I'm just asking you because it, it's, it's a decent question to ask. You know, you, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve destroyed the world. But what, what I'm getting at, like David, you know, he's not able to build a temple, but, right? But why? Because of, why? Because he had the affair with your adultery. Nothing yeah. to do with multiple wives. King Solomon, King Solomon okay, had pagan wives. Pagan wives, not strange. They called it. He married strange wives. Nothing to do with the the mount. Now he multiplied. Now, he multiplied wives. He hoarded. That yeah. I would say he he overdid it. But he didn't have problems from having more than one. He had problems that he married pagan wives, which okay. again I don't recommend people do. So then, was since polygyny wasn't a widespread practice amongst the early Christian churches, um, despite its presence in surrounding cultures, what do you think the early church did? Why do you think the early church did not adopt polygyny? Um, if it was acceptable, yeah. God, in the Old Testament, what, what so, was the reasoning? Do you think that they they resisted it in the right. beginning? Well, I think I think. Well, first off, let's go back. Let's go back. To, okay, if you look at Israel, it came. We started with one man, Abraham, and in five hundred years, he went from one man to two point four million and overthrew the greatest country in the world, Egypt, at the time. That's the power of polygyny. One man entered Egypt with seventy people, left. 430 years later with 2.4 million. Now that means that all every man had four wives at least because there's no way you can multiply at that level. And they overthrew the greatest country in the world in just 430 years or 500 years. Imagine if Christians embraced this, what we could do, right? Because we'd have more, more kids being raised by God in godly families. And, and, if, and think about how it would work over time. We could populate heaven and take them over the world. Now, I believe that polygyny was commonplace in the first century. Even in the oldest Christian letter was between two Christians written around 150 AD. You can Google this. It's not even, uh, it's on literary hub. And it says, greet your wives. It was one guy writing to another guy. And it says something about fish sauce and greeting your wives. So he, you know, he had two wives. This was accepted in, in, in Christianity. And because Rome though had influence this is where it spread. And Rome's, Rome and Greece's ways were one man, one woman, but it wasn't about morality. It was about inheritance and property and all that. So it, it worked its way in somehow to Christianity. But even Martin Luther, if you look at the great Martin Luther, he spoke Greek. He had a, and I believe he spoke Hebrew too. He said that there's no law against it. He's like, it doesn't go against God's word. It's between you and the Holy Spirit. So are we, uh, there were people that believed this, but they were, they were basically erased from the history books because for whatever reason, when you bring this up, people hate it. I don't know why, but they hate it. I'm not even practicing it. I just want people to know that they can do it and that God's okay with it because they would stop. I Justin Waller and I have been talking a little bit. He's yeah, Justin's, Justin's, Justin's a friend. Justin's He's a friend searching. Yeah, I know you know him. That's why I mentioned yeah. it. He's searching for God. But this yeah, dude, I, know, I know he has. I know if he, he would do it, he could marry five or ten of them. Would he go out and not fuck 